God, I haven't had to sync audio in forever. Yeah, so I have to go with my old uh, Zoom H4n microphone because <laughs> I'm having a audio nightmare at the moment. Past couple weeks, my brand new Sennheiser MKE 440 stereo mic has been acting up. And so a lot of times I'm getting some really weird feedback in the signal and it's ruining audio clips. So I have to send that in. And then I just got back from Sacramento, TSA. I don't know, they checked my luggage and now my handy dandy Rode NTG4 Plus that I've had for the past like seven or eight years is not working. But apparently Rode has a 10 year warranty on these. So hopefully I'll be able to send this in and get it fixed. But until then, we are going old school H4N in the palm of my hand. So today I just wanted to talk about my experience with the iPhone 13 Pro Max for the past two months since its release pretty much. We're going to talk about my overall experience with the phone and then kind of hone in on if I still use cinematic mode or ProRes or any of the pro video features since that's what we heavily focus on on this channel and I've made a bunch of videos about when the phone first came out and I wanted to leave this as a good place for you to ask any questions you have about the phone down in the comments below. And while you're down there, if you want to subscribe, that'd be cool too. This probably is the first iPhone that I've used in, you know, super bright daylight that I'm not actively thinking like, man, I wish this screen was brighter. They've really worked on that the past handful of years. And I forget the actual spec. I'll kind of throw it up on screen here of how bright it can get. But in my opinion, it's definitely bright enough even on a, you know, super bright day. If you're looking for durability, I'm honestly not really the best person to ask. I kind of baby all my stuff, so I haven't dropped this phone yet. So it's still pretty much in perfect condition. I do let my kids have it, and it is in a pretty cheap little Apple case. I shouldn't say cheap. It's definitely not cheap. It's overpriced, but a pretty thin Apple case. One thing that this iPhone is seriously excelling at, which you know, most new phones do, but then after about a month, you kind of start to see it disappear a little bit, is battery life. If you take a look at this screenshot of my last 10 days of usage, you can see that my screen on time is still over seven hours, which in my opinion is extremely good. To be honest, unless you're literally just sitting on it for like four hours in a row, just playing all sorts of games and social media and taking pictures and using it all over the place, it's pretty hard to kill this thing in a day. All right, so let's talk about the cameras. Obviously, in my previous videos, we already talked about how the hardware was a major upgrade this year, and I've continued to notice how good it is in uh, lower light situations, much less mushy, and it also takes pictures faster, even if they're the same result as the 12 Pro Max from last year. So for a low light shot, maybe it needed a three second exposure last year. Now it can do it in about one. And I feel like that's something that's not talked about as often. When you see comparison videos between them for especially photos, you'll pixel people and be like, hmm, that kind of looks the same. But when you actually use the cameras and realize that you can take them faster, you begin to realize that that's actually a pretty huge plus. Now, cinematic mode. Cinematic mode was arguably one of the biggest features, especially for the average consumer or user of the phone. Now, currently, as I'm recording this video, I've only actually shot 41 videos in cinematic mode, and there's a couple reasons behind that. One is, yes, it is limited to 1080p, which kind of stinks, but honestly, the biggest reason is I often find myself filming things that have natural depth to it anyway, and since the sensors continue to get larger on the phone, shooting in regular video mode or per it doesn't matter the codec just regular video mode i tend to get natural depth of field anyway that looks really nice so in that case i'd rather have the extra resolution don't get me wrong it is a really cool feature and i think it teaches a lot of people about depth of field and changing focus and compositions so if i was someone who was just starting out in the video world and my phone was the main one I definitely would use cinematic mode all the time, but for me, I just don't end up using it that much just yet, but I really hope they improve it, add more features, maybe even allow for 4K next year. Now, ProRes, obviously I've done quite a bit of content on this and a lot of people were betting against it, saying in a couple months, I was never gonna use it anymore. And that's honestly not true. I use it for its intended purpose, actually. So again, at the time of this recording, I have about 324 ProRes clips and that's a mix of ProRes shot in the stock camera app as well as in Filmic Pro when that was first released. Now I saw so many videos talking about ProRes and most of the videos were good and fine but people in the comments sections really don't seem to understand the 
purpose of ProRes or what it actually is. Because in these comparison videos, I would see people comment like, oh, the dynamic range looks the same or the sky looks bluer in this one or pointing out things that a codec doesn't really have anything to do with. The point of ProRes is to literally retain more detail in the image and capture more data. It's not going to affect the dynamic range, skin tones, colors, anything like that. ProRes literally just compresses the image less than H.265. Now in return, you get a much bigger file size. And so that's why I only use ProRes for situations that I know I'm going to be intercutting with a YouTube video, for example, um, in my last phone gimbal one, there was a couple shots of like my setup in the hotel room. Uh, they weren't really creative and I didn't end up color grading them or making them look insane, but I shot those in ProRes just because I knew I would use it in a YouTube video. So I wanted the ability um, to have a little bit extra detail, make it a little less phone footage -y. And there have been moments where I'm taking videos of kids or if I'm in a new place and there's like a really cool landscape shot and I just want a really high resolution, high detailed shot, then I'll turn on ProRes for that as well. But for most scenarios, I definitely keep it turned off and just record in the regular video mode. Issue 6.5 on the iPhone and the compression is so efficient and so good that for pretty much all personal videos, it is more than good enough. The only weird thing that I've seen in the stock camera app ever since ProRes was added that I don't really understand is it tells you at the top how much time remaining you have uh, to shoot in ProRes basically before your phone is full. And so for me, it started at like little over an hour and now it says about six minutes and then right underneath that it has a free resources button. Now I started pushing it one time and it just changed to free resources. I was hoping it would tell me what it was doing and I stopped it because I didn't really, I, I don't know what it was doing. I didn't want it to like delete clips or something that I haven't opened. Now I have my phone set to upload and back up to iCloud and then just keep a optimized version of the video on the phone so it stores the original. So after shooting most of my ProRes clips for my last big ProRes video, my phone was at nearly almost 800 gigs out of my one terabyte and it took a while of being on my home Wi-Fi and uploading everything to iCloud for it to then just save the optimized version on the phone, which now has brought it down to like 340 or 300 some gigs. So I have a lot of storage space on the phone. However, my iCloud storage space, I just checked is nearly full at 1.8 out of two terabytes. Literally 1.4 terabytes is just from uh, the Photos app. And to be honest, I think that was only at like 250 or 300 gigs uh, before ProRes was a thing. So. I've shot a good terabyte worth of ProRes footage for 324 clips, so it takes up a ton of space. So yeah, I need to figure out what that free resources thing is. If any of you guys know, please let me know down in the comments below. But yeah, in terms of just being an upgrade from last year, I really do think it was a really solid upgrade, especially if you're into video work, then it was one of the biggest upgrades in quite a few years. More and more am I just choosing to use my iPhone as kind of a vlogging style camera or BTS camera on shoots rather than bringing my, uh, you know, bigger camera that I have to rig up and worry about batteries and media and all that extra stuff. Don't get me wrong, transferring uh, ProRes footage from the iPhone still sucks and I'm sure it will super suck until at least next year or iOS 16. No, it's pretty much going to suck until they just put Thunderbolt on the bottom of the iPhone. But other than that, it's a really solid phone. I'm curious what you guys think, those of you that have had it for a while. Do you agree? Are you regretting your purchase? Are you super happy with the upgrade? And to those who haven't upgraded yet, are you waiting for next year? Or just want to get more questions answered before you buy it? I do want to give a small shout out to Moft though. They're not a sponsor. They don't actually know I'm doing this in this video. But Last year, they sent me their wallet case. Hold on. So it's this little guy right here. Um, it's a MagSafe wallet. And originally, I was going to get Apple's, but they sent me this, and I was like, I'll check it out. And I've been using it for the past year, and this thing is still in, like, perfect condition. Again, even with kids throwing it around. It fits three cards just like the Apple one, but it has this little extra flap thing on the outside that can become a stand so you can set your phone down but I actually use it as a way to get an extra card in there so I get my license slide it in there so I have 
three cards in the main compartment and then my license over here. It's never fallen out. It's not really going anywhere. And this year they actually randomly sent me some extra ones. So an actual phone case and another wallet. Uh, personally, I like my black one and it's in such perfect condition. I don't really need this one. So I don't know, maybe I'll do a giveaway if one of you guys want this. This is cases for 13 Pro Max, but the wallet will fit anything. So I'll probably just give it away to one person. I don't know, comment down below and I'll pick somebody. But yeah, so good job, Moff. Do you make great products? I'll leave some links in the description. And yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.